This is the House Healthcare Committee. It's Friday, April 16th. It's two in the afternoon. Um, and we are turning our attention to uh, looking at language, uh, a draft that I had worked on and I think Representative Donahue and anyway, some basically took some ideas from uh, the testimony we heard on Tuesday. And then we heard further testimony this morning and I wanted to open it up to committee discussion to about the draft language to see if there are questions or concerns about the language as it got put into the draft. Um, and then also if there are any other further suggestions generally and uh, suggestions based on the testimony we heard this morning, et cetera. I also wanted to bring into the discussion at some point probably because I was shared a draft of what the House Judiciary Committee has been working on and there are some things there that it may, it, you know, I've seen something and I thought, oh, well, you know, have we been thinking about that? Maybe we would have incorporated that. So I'm just going to open it up. And I think the first question for me is, are there particular questions, concerns, or reactions to the draft as it was first circulated? And, and you know, use that to make your comments as needed. So that's an open-ended question to any committee member who has thoughts. I think I have. I think, I think with the draft, I think uh, we did cover uh, most of Miss White's comments, don't you? A, a, num a number of them we did, yes. And I decided not to try to go through them point by point this morning, but uh, Although there, although there were some points she made, yeah, and yeah. She, she also submitted her written testimony. Did folks get that? Which I read through, and there were there. Were, so, I just saw it, so I haven't read it. Yeah, um, and I might make a couple comments. There, were, there are a couple yeah. things she said there that I thought, oh well, you know, I would I would actually ask us to entertain that possibly. Yeah. Uh, well, so um, Leslie, did that you were. Leslie and then Ian. Well, I just I was just curious because this bill doesn't have sort of this notion of sort of intent. And you know, she was talking about innocent until proven guilty and you know, sort of in this mental health world. And I was just wondering about that. Many bills we see has a why do we have this bill? What's and I didn't know in the Senate version anyway, I didn't see any intent. And I was just wondering about that. I have some other questions, but that was just at the beginning of it. That's not always done. Okay. And if fact, it's not, it's often most, most often not done. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, there's an implied sense of intent based on what is being put forward. But I think if I can speak to it, so I, I think, and uh, others can as well, but I think it is an issue that and it, it came up early in some of the early testimony we were taking it, comments were made to me that, you know, people are talking as if the person had been found guilty. They're not, they have not been adjudicated. That's the whole point. Uh, and so I think people get attacked, somehow get weary of saying the alleged offender or the alleged offense. I mean, there's been an offense, but this is an alleged, you know, offender. Yeah. Or they, a non-adjudicated something. Right. There's a yeah. point that needs to be made about that. I guess that's what I'm getting yeah. at. And, and we and we actually have that in our draft. And that was a tweak I was going to suggest to add to it. But we have, you know, I, I think it, um, like on our li the list of issues they're supposed to look at, there's C, consider due process criteria for defendants held without adjudication of a crime. And to clarify that, we could add and presumed innocent. But, um, or as per the constitution or whatever, you know, as, as culture, I don't know. I didn't know how to. And it, it should it. say due process requirements, not criteria, because they're not just criteria that we would invent, they're requirements. Yeah. So consi consider due process requirements. Well, can I also pick up on, uh, on the very last page of uh, Wilda White's written testimony uh, in the very last paragraph, she also has a sentence that says, um, there's really two things there. One is when the, the idea of maybe having some language when reviewing competency restoration models and the forensic need for individuals incompetent to stand trial, 
the working group shall also balance the presumption of innocence of an individual incompetent to stand trial along with public safety. So somehow embed, and I think there's a way to embed that mm -hmm. into ours. And I think that would be a good thing. Yeah, that's where I was going. I thought about it in the area of intent, but this might be way better. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, Katie, Kate, Katie, 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 Katie. I don't Katie. see Katie. Oh. We're going to have to keep notes. Okay. Because she was going to, I knew that she has a, she's again juggling several things, but I think that is one of the, I, I would like for us, I think we could in, embed that in some part of our language. And I think that would pick up both on what, I think, what Will did said, and you know, there's a way to strengthen that. And I think the one other related thing that she suggested that I thought made sense, um, and, and maybe part of the same sentence or whatever, but considering our, our, our the, the policy of the, the statutory policy of the General Assembly to be working towards a system, I forget the exact language, towards a system that does not use coercion. Yeah, there's, no. there's a legislative there's yeah, a statute think, that has the wording, but yeah, add that reference. As, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree because that I mean basically that's that's the that's the values goal that's stated in statute for the Vermont mental health system. Yep. Um, uh, Art Representative Peterson, you're muted. I got to unmute. Yeah, I'm, I'm toggling back and forth. So I'm on the screen of uh, on the first page. And this is a small thing. Um, so you're talking about our draft now? Pardon me? The draft that we sent? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the draft you sent with the yellow, the highlighted yeah, 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 yeah. area. Yeah. Um, page one, and it's just a small thing. And I always notice that we put Vermonters in out of state correctional facility. To me, I would put uh, state residences, state residents in our state correctional. I wouldn't use the term Vermonters in a, in a, in a thing mm -hmm. like this to me. I mean, that's a kind of a colloquial. Kind of an informal. Yeah, I, I would put state residents. Or Vermont residents. Or, or some word that really codifies it. So that's just me, but. Yep. No, Vermont residents, that makes sense. I don't know, yeah. What's the legal up, 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 legal up to the group? It's no big deal. <laughs> hmm. What's the legal definition of a Vermonter? Yeah, how do, is oh, it a city? Yeah, Vermonter is very vague. I think Vermont residents makes sense. That's that could be its about. own bill. <laughs> 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 Defining a Vermonter. <laughs> there are no Vermonters in heaven, you know. Right. <laughs> we all know that poem, I'm sure. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. I think we can we can probably find a way to do that, Art. Okay. Uh, Leslie, you had. Uh, yeah, I, I was just wondering uh, to the, I guess if you want to call it draft that we got, draft 3.1, they yeah. talk about uh, Department of Corrections contracts for healthcare services. And I was wondering if the same contractor provides physical health services and mental health services. Well, you're, you're picking up on something, if I can pick up on that. Uh, there was a time when that was not true. And there were separate contractors for mental health and for health. That is, my understanding is now there's a single contract with a single contractor. I had initially gone through and suggested, with thought about putting in contracts for health and mental health care services so that it was clear. But then that flies in the face of us thinking of healthcare services as including mental health services. So I backed away from making that suggestion. Although there was, although the, at the one point where, and I think I had suggested this, but at the one point where it talks about to evaluate whether, uh, I think it's in section five, whether there should be some kind of oversight mm -hmm. uh, by the Department of Mental Health. And I thought maybe that's the place where it actually should say, uh, should provide oversight authority of the entity for with whom the Department of Corrections contracts is for health and mental or, or for mental health services. So that's yeah. well, like you wouldn't but it, want but it actually yeah it says provide oversight authority for mental health services provided by the entity that's contracted for health care. That to me that makes sense. We're, so we're their oversight would be of the mental health services that okay, are I'm, provided by 
who oversees I, the I, maybe I, maybe i made that suggestion earlier. i'm actually on the earlier draft before a few other small things were integrated so okay so you may have suggested may that, have that, and that and I, yeah okay right who, who currently oversees for non-mental health services nobody. Nobody. the whole thing is just by the, de the, the department of corrections the commissioner the commissioner of corrections yeah, no, that's the, I mean, I think that's the, we'll for me, up. that's part of the issue that they, they have a whole healthcare system for which none of the regular authorities have any relationship. Which is why we don't actually have jurisdiction over healthcare in corrections, ironically. Yeah, that's well, corrections and institutions. Now, now they're asking us to weigh in, we're weighing in on this, but in the, in the bigger picture of committee jurisdictions, well, I think we, I think part of what we're suggesting in a way is that we should have an involvement there because in fact, these people yeah. don't just stay there. They go in and out and are part of the system. So. Yeah. If we're going to though, parse out DMH having jurisdiction or looking at whether they should have jurisdiction over just mental health services, are we going to just leave health services out in the wind still under department of corrections versus the vermont department, department of health is should... there any jurisdiction am i frozen yeah i think i'm frozen you are i'm just gonna pipe up because yeah, when i can't see my... anybody moving but me it means i'm frozen <laughs> yeah yeah we're hearing... well the, the only problem because my hand doesn't okay, seem on. to be working <laughs> hi mari what would you like to say <laughs> thanks <laughs> Um, I, gave up on I my was hand. frozen, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I gave up on my hand raising. So I've been indirectly involved in some of the COVID cases in um, a couple of the correctional facilities. Um, and I and other healthcare providers have been incredibly frustrated, um, not just around COVID care, but um, the care in general. And um, I don't know if we could manage to put the Department of Health in this current bill, but I think it's something that we absolutely need to work on. Um, and at the very minimum, we should, um, uh, I do support the oversight by the Department of Mental Health um, in the, the contracted services. Um, and I, I won't go into more detail about my thoughts about what I've, um, witnessed first and second hand. Well, may I, may I so, ask? Yeah, because I, oh. Yeah, yeah, I just want to point out that this particular bill is about a study of the mental health services, basically the quality of care, mental health services and corrections. So yeah. I, I'm not disagreeing with the bigger discussion. I think it's important, but in terms of what we're doing in this bill, we're kind of contained to Look, the, the, it's a study, it's not a directive, it's a study on these different issues related to the uh, quality of mental health care in corrections. So. Can I throw out an idea, which it, because it, I think you're right there, Anne, because that, that's really the parameters of what we're working with here. But, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's something as simple at this point of a letter, <laughs> ironic, a letter, but somehow some communication mm -hmm. from us to the to the Department of Corrections, to the Department of Health, from us as the Healthcare Committee of the House, and include and copy to our Corrections and Institutions Committee saying, uh, in the course of our reviewing and ra raising questions about oversight of the mental health care, we are also find ourselves concerned about what kind of oversight there is for the healthcare generally mm -hmm. uh, of uh, those under the Department of Corrections. And we could do that as a separate letter, uh, which doesn't have to put something in this particular piece of legislation and raise that issue. And then think about a future bill. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. And then, mm -hmm. and then take some initiative, you know, mm -hmm. think, think about doing something, I mean, not try to do it right now, given mm -hmm. everything else that's going on, but, but think about possibly a committee bill or, uh, or a bill sponsored by some of us, you know, mm -hmm. to, to actually put something in motion. Yeah. So I'm gonna make a note about that yeah. as a possible kind of side addition to this. 
Um, yep. Well, I just wanted to check with Mari if that, if that. Adjusts. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Then just okay. Uh, Thank you. Scan, yeah, scanning the screen here. Okay, Ian, and then I have a thought I want to throw out. Yeah, I had just one thought on the draft, and it was I was thinking back to what Fox was talking about and describing, you know, bringing in that uh, regional or national expertise, and I. Mm -hmm. I would take out the word. Uh, let me find where it is. Where, where, um, yeah, help us where where you think about. Yeah, it. yeah. I'm 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 looking now. I can't. Oh wait, I can find it on my laptop here. Right. Uh, okay. On the draft on page. Um, this doesn't have page numbers. Let's see. The beginning of the forensic care working group. Mm -hmm. The very opening of section three, it says the Department of Mental Health shall convene a working group of interested stakeholders to provide expertise and recommendations. I think that the expertise is what was supposed to be brought in by the Department of Mental Health as part of advising the committee that a lot of the committee members are not necessarily people with expertise and that's why they need to bring it in. So I would strike expertise from there and then maybe add a sentence somewhere, Katie could figure out where, that said the department shall use you know, national or regional expertise to present to the working group models that deal with these issues as a framework for their looking at gaps and recommendations. And that might be the place to also say, and they, they should include models that are proposed by um, stakeholders so that that and that that's melding what Fox said with what Wilda was saying about, you know, not presuming any models. If there's if there's stakeholders who specifically want to say, well, this is this is a really good model from this state. Well, that could be included in what's looked at. But but I'm just thinking of a, a sentence somewhere um, that would that would say this is how the department is going to is going to bring in national expertise to present models for the working group to review and make recommendations on. Can I ask a question of Anne? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm just looking at the list, and and, and I'm wondering if that you're thinking that people from Dale or the state's attorney, the attorney general, that they don't have expertise to offer the group? Oh, no, all of the different groups have expertise in some area or another. But the purpose of them coming together, I think, is bringing all these different perspectives to the table. But when Fox was talking about um, expertise on forensic care systems, these, none of these people really have expertise on, you know, systems of forensic, forensic systems that we don't have in Vermont, um, but that some that many other states have. So they, they all have expertise in their spheres, but not on forensic systems of care. I see what you're saying. So make a note, I made a note and we'll try to work that in. Um, I, I'd like to pick up on several things that uh, Wilda White put in her written testimony. She referenced it, I think in past, not in passing, but she referenced it in her verbal testimony, but also in her written testimony. And I think from my point of view, uh, one of them was in terms of the list of representatives where, <laughs> She was making the case for, I think our draft has two individuals with lived experience of mental illness. She was advocating for three, but let's, I'm gonna step aside for the number for a moment. But she, I think a point she made as well was not just lived experience with mental illness, but in knowledge of the criminal justice and or civil commitment system. And I think that's a good addition. Uh, Maybe saying, at least one who has, because I you might start narrowing down where you're not going to find. It's not that easy even to find people who have the ability and the comfort level to be parts of working groups like this who have those experiences. 
And so if you start narrowing the criteria too much, you're going right. okay. to be well, hard. That's... But at least one of them we could put. I think that's a good choice also to, to make that addition. Okay. Let's, well, but let's, let's, I'll make a note here and we'll. Uh, Uh, and I wanted to just make another suggestion that uh... okay, and uh, you know I have to say I'm I'm saying this without knowledge. That's the issue. I don't know about. I'm not familiar with competence competency restoration models. Uh, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm willing to offer that background if you have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my, well, I've, I'm I'm not questioning that you don't, but I but I'm not. I know that I don't. Right. Uh, and one of the one of the things that again Wilda suggested was that the working group. This is again. This is on her last page of her mm -hmm. written testimony. It says that the working group shall include in its review of competency restoration models models that do not rely on involuntary drugging. Now that's the choice of words that she uses. I would probably phrase it differently because I think mm -hmm. that's, I mean, different people will describe the same thing where I think that what we're referring to is forced medication. Involuntary in, medication. In, in, yeah. Not forced, but involuntary medication uh, to restore competency. And I think to the degree, I mean, I would be perfectly happy to have that be part of, in terms of looking at competency restoration models to include looking at models that do not rely on involuntary medication. And I think- Yeah, I, I think that that would be fine. You know, that that would that's consistent with what I was suggesting that that without, models that other sta that stakeholders present be looked at. I, I think, yeah, I think that language is fine. I think in looking for that, unless a stakeholder knows of one, um, I, I'm not sure they exist because actually well, that- they may no, not. well, I'm I'm relatively sure they don't because, and that's why some advocates are very concerned about introducing this as a model because that is sort of the whole point of competency restoration models. Uh, that's no. why the Department of Mental Health is asking for this because the criteria for involuntary medication for somebody who's refusing it rests on certain criteria around present dangerousness, refusal and all that, and doesn't allow for seeking it when the issue is restoring competence and a person is refusing medication. So I mean, I, that's why there are people concerned about it. But well, I, I, I but, and, it's, and it's fine to add and shall look at models that don't require that. I just- Doesn't say that only, only look at those it, models. Exactly, no, no, that, exactly. So I think that's fine. Because I think it's messaging part of the intent to be in keeping with our state public policy. So it's messaging, look and look for those. Well, it's, and it's also consistent with, it's consistent with our support for uh, settings like Soteria House. Yes. Other, where in fact, we, we actually have said, we will try to create settings which don't, which are not premised on involuntary medication. And in right. fact, some of those settings then prove to be successful. I don't know about it in this particular instance, but I think it's consistent with that. And I would like to have that be part of, you know, not, not constrain it from looking at anything else, but mm -hmm. to also look at that. Uh, Woody, Representative Page. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. On, um, on uh, section four, um, I guess this probably pertains to what you were just talking about with competency. She does make a recommendation that item J um, be uh, deleted. I don't know whether you saw that. I do. Which is and which is item J? I don't have that. It's in section four of the bill. It's actually, and Woody, the only thing I'd say about that is that I think that is out. I mean, we've been asked to focus on sections five and six, yeah, yeah. and that I'm, I'm going to leave 
in my mind, I'm leaving that to the Judiciary Committee to make that call. Okay, that's fine. I just, I know we were talking about competency here and, yeah. you know, and um, so that's fine. Yeah, she was sharing the, the, that testimony, I think it says on it, this, this is what she submitted to judiciary. And I think the, the underlying bill there is, is predominantly judiciary issues. But I would note, Woody, uh, and that in reviewing the full testimony, which I did, or written testimony, that judiciary had incorporated a number of suggestions, including getting, giving a copy to the respondent, which uh, Will raised earlier to this year and also preserving evidence for future time in terms of a future evaluation. So I, I felt like they were attentive to a number of the other suggestions that are not our primary jurisdiction. And I just got a note from Colleen saying that Katie's been stuck in a probes. So <laughs> we'll do our best to communicate with her. Yeah. Okay, uh, Representative Peterson. Yeah, I, this is more a comment chair than, than anything specific to this bill, but I was, I was blown away when she picked out my question about the possibility of a person faking, um, I didn't call it that, I forget what I called it, uh, the game in the system. Yeah. Um, and, and I wondered if that had any, I, I didn't quite get the tie-in to anything here. Um, it was about the uh, doctor's uh, testimony uh, about that. And I guess the doctor said that that didn't happen typically. It was hard to happen, and most people didn't want it to happen. Um, I don't know what ha if it has any relevance to this. I just, I was blown away when she picked it out. That's all. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think it has relevance here, but I can't see why it would. Well, I think it was brought up in the context of being able to evaluate what is happening and the suggestion being uh, at least a particular study that she was referencing, which I think we have some vague familiarity with uh, of individuals deliberately trying to. Um, and apparently it did happen or does happen. Some, well, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. I, I, I I'm not sure I just, it's the primary issue for us to have to look at, but I think, right, right. But I think, but I think I, yeah, I get your point. I, I was kind of interested in, in how she said that uh, you can't fool somebody that is, um, and it's based upon what you were saying, Art, you can't fool uh, somebody that's mentally ill from gaming the system. You might be able to fool maybe you or me, but not somebody that is, that is ill. Yeah, you know, I just okay. found that kind of interesting, you know, yeah. just in the context, you know, what she was saying. Yeah, I'm not sure these are, well, I'll just leave it there. It's not an empirical It was study. just an interesting, you know, sideline that she had mentioned. You know. Yeah. Um, Question, Lori. Um, we're so prescriptive, I think, in what we're asking for, and in, in the evaluation and the working group in the forensic working group. Is it appropriate to somehow say and and a catch-all for other suggestions that we're not thinking of, or Is other that criteria we're not thinking of? Isn't that the, like the intro language about, um, now I'm trying to find it, got this out of order. Item one says identify any gaps. Right, Ga gaps and ways to, uh, um, Are you referring to the restorative models, the competency restoration, Lori? Because that's what I was thinking. Do we really want to put we want them to look at this, this, and this, or do we want like a catch-all? Right. We so want the catch-all, to... yeah, the introduction is the catch-all when it says there's the, the report's supposed to be gaps in the current system 
I'm sorry, where is the introduction? Um, looking at, I'm sorry, it, the, it's at the, it's B1. It's right after the, all the participants are referenced. The beginning of what the, what the group is supposed to be looking at, what the report's supposed to say. The intro is identifying any gaps in the current mental health and criminal justice system structure and opportunities to improve public safety and address treatment needs. So when we say the working group shall, and I don't, you know, I don't know the legalese of this, does yeah. that mean that they shall only be looking at the items listed there? That's my concern. We can check with Katie. I don't think so. I think that's more like a, a minimum. You shall look at these. But not necessarily. But it doesn't others. necessarily exclude other things that would be gaps in our system. But you know, just you're pointing that out makes me think. If I can just jump in here, like mm -hmm. if you look at the language in B one, mm -hmm. uh, in some ways that that thought, that first thought, it's the intro overall thought. But in a little way, in another way, it kind of gets lost because the it other does. says one, two, three, four. I'm wondering if that should be number one. And then, oh, yeah. And I think that should be number one, and that should be the first one. Yeah, yeah. And that should be one. And then everything else should be two, three, four, and five. Yeah, that Rather, makes sense. That would help. Yes. Because that, that holds out that that's really the major, they're to look at the gaps in current mental health and criminal justice system structure and opportunities to improve public. And that's, that's the. Yeah, that's number one. And then. So can I, can I actually suggest that we even divide it because I think opportunities gets lost as well. Sure. The gaps so in the number system, one, the gaps. Number then two, opportunities, the opportunities to improve. And shell, and then the ABC, it just kind of in that list. I mean, I know it's semantics, but I, I, I do think it gets lost. I didn't notice it. But then maybe you're right, there should be an E in any other research evidence-based programming or whatever that leaves it open as e oh yeah we'll add one at the end right or however they go whatever the numbers or letters are but and anything yeah. else yeah Alyssa, did that get to what you're you mentioned that too yeah i just i keep thinking about Representative Lippert talking about we don't put gardens in statute. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted I wanted to say what seed company they come from. <laughs> For, I, I think it should be a labeled Vermont based seed company. <laughs> yes, yes, it oh, must be go there. <laughs> yeah. Go Sorry. It. No, I mean Sorry. just put, putting it in statute that you have to look at one you know, f without involuntary medication. I mean, we could get into a whole list of other ones. And I'm just thinking, can't there be, you're right, a catch-all phrase that says, we want you to look at everything. But the problem is sometimes <laughs> if you don't, if you're not specific enough, it can get just like, oh, we didn't look there because, you know, but and if everybody says, well, of course they'll look there or we want them to look there, but we don't have to say it, then it doesn't happen. And so it's that, it's that balance. And yes, we don't put gardens in stuff. I was going to say, next thing you know, you have a sandbox and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, but, but that context too, going into a lot of detail in statute may be a little different from going into detail oh, on this is a, this is a this study. Is, this is this what is we want to yeah. hear in a report back. Yeah, that's actually an interesting distinction. Yeah. But. <laughs> Okay. Um, you know, it, it is a study and they will report back to us. We need to go any further than that. I mean, we all know all about these studies, not really going anywhere. Do we need? Should we put that in the introduction? We all know no, about no, no, studies no. that don't go oh, anywhere. Oh, no, this is a waste of time. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't mean it's a waste of time, but I mean, okay, they do the study, they report back. I mean, we need some language, you know, to do more than just that, to really, yeah. and, 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 I, and I don't have a suggestion either. 
I'm just saying. Well, one, one of the ways it does that a little bit that goes further than just report back is they, they are supposed to include proposed draft legislation, which, which does help go a little step further in terms of giving something concrete. Because just like when Bill presents something to us, if you actually have something put in front of you to react to, I mean, the draft legislation might be something that gets rejected or changed or whatever, but having it in front of us as a product gives We're, us probably point. more, gives us a starting point more than just a big report from which you have to draw out how would you deal with these recommendations, so. So are you saying a study group would draft legislation? Yeah, they've been asked to, the department as part of its they report. Would ask, they would ask staff to draft legislation. They would ask the department right. to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it, it says the report that they provide in their final in their report is, I believe that's still in there. It was in an earlier draft, but yes. So Kit. Yeah, okay. I see what Line you're saying. Line 13 on the last yeah. page. So Woody, are you, your hands up. I didn't know if you were still, yeah, okay. I, I wanna just, I'm gonna pull a couple things out of what I saw as the House Judiciary's initial draft and just throw them out there because I there's things which I we, we hadn't talked about but I thought oh well maybe we should because if we can incorporate some of those pieces here that might be useful I think if if they're if we think they're appropriate and two of them that strike me one is I mean I think it goes without saying but these days we're, we're saying it and, it and it needs to be said and that is they have a they have language in saying that in the work of including evaluations of forensic treatment models Group shall ensure that social and racial equity issues are considered. Mm. These considerations should be reflected in the report submitted. And I think that that's, I think we should include that. I mean, that's, that's like one of those pieces, which is especially given the settings that we're talking about. Well, especially we, we because we, there's disproportionate, uh, there's, there's, dis, there's disparities in terms of race, if nothing else. There's disparities in corrections and there's disparities in our institutional mental health facilities. Yeah. So I there's disproportionate. I, I, would I think like, that's excellent. I would, I would like to steal that from theirs and move it into ours as well. Pretend um, we thought of it at the same time. Yeah, well, I know I'm oh, I'm happy to say I, yeah, I took that from somewhere else. And then it's on YouTube uh, now. What's that? It's on YouTube now. Yeah, all right. Now. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's quality improvement science. Quality improvement science is to build on other people's work and improve. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I think. That's what I was saying. Quality improvement science. Thank you, Leslie. You're uh, uh, and then there was one other it, a, a, a line that jumped out. I mean, I think we're saying it in a slightly different way, but this really captured something when it says talking about the models that should be looked at in terms of uh, models for forensic treatment, and they have some like models for forensic treatment other than inpatient facilities, including community-based treatment. Now, we, we allude to that, but this makes it very explicit. And yeah, I, I, like, I like the explicitness of it, which is we're not just talking about building a building and putting people in an institutional setting. We, we want to look and I, I, somewhere make else. Make sure the models it. that you look at include that potential mo model and those models. I, that I think that's been embedded in what we've talked about, but I like the way it's made very explicit. Yeah. So unless there's objection, I'd like to try to integrate something like that. Woody, you, your hand is still up. Is it up again? Yes, I, I just wanted to bring up <laughs> the issue you. about um, continuing our work after this is done. If you look on the last age of the uh, the bill that, that uh, we received. It talks about um, submitting a report to um, the Joint Legislative Justice Oversight Committee. Yes. I, I, there's nothing there about health unless it's, it's, no. it's mentioned elsewhere. I, I don't Th know. Thank you for that reminder because I think, because I, I highlighted that before as well, I think there needs to be a member from healthcare on that justice oversight committee. Yeah, ju just to clarify, the reason that that particular one says that is because it's when we're out of session, but that's, but then when we're out of session, healthcare isn't represented. Right, yeah. So yeah. I, 
I think we ought to. We uh, thank you, Woody, for remembering that. And uh, but if if I'm understanding, may I ask a question? Please. B on B one, I guess it's the middle one. It says on or before February first, Department of Mental Health shall submit preliminary report, and then it lists all kinds of House committees, but we're not in session. No, we are then February first. Oh God, you're right. No February. Oh, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's the next one. It's the um, the one that's due July first. That's just to the Joint Le Legislative Oversight Committee. And then the third one, the final report is we're back in session. I can't imagine what it's like to be in session. So I'm sort of lost. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you don't want to learn what it's like to be in session in September. Ooh. That, was, that was an experience not to be repeated. Especially when you didn't end till the end of June. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, you guys really had oh, July. it. July, July, wasn't it? July. No, I think it was June. It was June. It was June. But then we were back in August, not September. Oh, okay. Because I remember August. we only had a short three or four short weeks. time. Oh, we were back in August. That's right. Not so. oh. anyway. It's a reflection of my brain being scrambled. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're approaching the. Well, I mean, it's not quite three, but I, we've made a bunch of suggestions. Um, Here's what I'd like to suggest. I mean, and there may be more right now, but that uh, I work with Katie to communicate the ideas that we've put forward here with a new draft and that we circulate that draft ideally on Monday so that we can come back and look at it on Tuesday afternoon. Does that work for folks? Does that give you enough time to, I think that's enough time for Katie probably to reintegrate some things. Does it make sense to have the whole bill? Cause this is just, to five and six, yeah. that's all we're looking at, right? Or just to have the whole bill in, in toto to look at? The challenge is, we, I can, we can do that. The challenge is that we're not kind of, I mean, there may be amending to that, that I, I don't want us so, to get pulled into amending that but when if judiciary already has their, or I could ask them to submit the first sections as judiciary has amended those. Right, yeah, as, so yeah. that we have one piece. Yeah, yeah. So that, but that's yeah. reminding me, reminding me that, you know, I, I was following judiciary and right, right in the beginning, actually, uh, Representative Grad had asked me to testify wearing my other hat, not this committee. Um, and, and one of the things that I submitted actually as a language proposal, which ties into what Bill was saying about presumed innocent on the victim notification. Um, and clearly, these are situations where there is a victim of a crime, but the person has been charged with it, not convicted, they're presumed innocent. Right. So, so I suggested and asked them, instead of saying notification of the victim of the crime, in other words, assuming that the person being discharged is the one who did it, that it specifically says victim of the crime which that person was accused of. Yeah, I don't know if they've done so that. that. Uh, I don't know if they've done that yet, but I mean, Katie drafted the language and, um, uh -huh. and, and they have it. So but I okay. think that's consistent. Maybe, maybe this committee wants to like say, yeah, we support, <laughs> support <yet>. that piece, <laughs> um, think, but. Uh, well, I would because I just because it's consistent with being clear that because of the uh, incompetency of stand trial, incompetence of stand trial, or the insanity at the time of not being sane at the time of commission of the crime, you you will not have been adjudicated. I right. Mean, that's, that's the whole point. It's so easy to forget that in the course. Well, of it's it's very. I know that it frustrates me a lot because some of the you know the state's attorneys and people will will say. I I mean I've heard people say. Well, yeah, but but we know, we know this person did it. You know, they were like witnesses and all. And I, I'm like, we don't know. Dang, that thing called the Constitution. <laughs> is that where we use the word alleged? I mean, we could just yeah. say. Yeah. Well, but alleged isn't isn't the technical 
that's not what you would use, I think, in statute or, or whatever. But I think the person who has been charged with yeah. the crime would be the way to say it. But the point is that you, we, we don't just typically say, well, we know we know they did it, so why worry about that? Right, right. But it is, it's- uh, you we, can are also, we do have a presumption of innocence here. Right. And you can also appreciate the, yeah. Yeah, the, I understand that. And that's why I support the victim notification. I support recognizing right. that, but, but let's just keep that balance in mind. Yeah, okay. Leslie? I'm not sure if we address this, but Wilder brought up the idea of doing the competency eval at the same time as the insanity eval. And I'm not sure we talked about that. And do we have any thoughts about that? My own reaction to that was that that was really a judiciary issue. Okay. Yeah, that's that, a, that was just my reaction to it. But yeah, that you know, but I should say that they did in the. Again, I don't want to speak for them because I I'm, I just looked through this, but the, I, I noticed that that one of the things they did do was to talk about that. There shall be, they shall collect and preserve any evidence necessary to form an opinion as to sanity if the person regains competence. I think that has to do with the same issue of doing yeah. them at the same time or not doing it at the same time. And See, I mean, my, yeah, my personal preference would be to say, we're doing this study on all these key issues and what other states do and so forth. Things like that, we ought to, that should be part of what's done after the report back rather than doing these some pieces now, but but that becomes really not our, I mean, that's really up to judiciary. And I think they, I, I don't think that would fly well with the Senate to just say, I mean, it might be let's slightly, put it all in a study. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it may be that there's, I mean, there's, it's hard to make a firm line between what is, what our purview might be, but we've been particularly asked to look at sections five and six. So. Anything else? There's an X for an appropriation. Oh, oh, thank you for saying that. Uh, did, did I, I thought I copied to everyone the memo from, I did it? I don't, I think you just sent it to Lori and I maybe. The, oh, the, it was well, just I an email. To, oh, sorry, I meant to send it to everybody. It's like yeah. got lost in the translation. Uh, so I, I can send it to you. The, so Fox, uh, Deputy Commissioner Fox sent me an email. Uh, saying that the department was recommending twenty to $25,000 as an appropriation that would allow them to do what would need it. And I think that was to look at bringing experts, et cetera. That's for the expert, yeah. Yeah, and that doesn't include the per diems probably for the, but um, right. but, but twenty to $25,000 was in terms of the resources issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I think that should be, I mean, that'll get communicated. Um, yeah, Katie can plug that into the next round. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot about that. Would people like a copy of what he sent? I mean, I can easily forward that or have Colleen forward it. Only if you think we, we, should, probably, we should probably have it on uh, posted. It's probably it should be on yes. the Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Katie's here. <laughs> Hi, Katie. <laughs> So um, we understand you got uh, waylaid by the other committee and I other. Sure did. I heard about five minutes of your conversation. <laughs> and a lot of it said, "Well, we'll communicate all these suggestions to Katie," and uh, so we will try to do that. I've made notes, and some others have made notes. Um, there are there are a number of things we'd like to add to the draft, and. Um, and our hope was that you might be able to have a revised draft for us to look at on like late in the day, Monday or sometime on Monday that we could then turn to review on Tuesday afternoon. I, again, I'm not sure that, I, I think I was told you weren't available, but honestly at this point, I apologize, but we just have to keep moving and we'll do our best to communicate and let you know what we're trying to do and you can balance your various commitments. I think we're at that point. Does that seem feasible though, Katie, in terms of a time frame of what you have? That sounds great. Yeah, okay. 
And wow. just for, I got a, um, um, I got an email, I got a request from House Judiciary um, to testify to bring uh, the health care recommendations uh, Wednesday morning at nine. So okay. hopefully not Tuesday morning. <laughs> right. No. So that's well, I think perfect. We should, I think we will show, we'll have achieved it by then. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, seeing nothing else, I'm going to call call us to a halt uh, for the day. Uh, thank you for taking. I think this was a good use of our time this one hour. And I think what I'll do is uh, bring us bring this to a close. And then uh, Katie, if, no, no, you have a hard stop. I know. So we'll find a different time to communicate the things that we want to have added, added to the draft. I'm not going to try to I would prefer not to try to reduce that to a memo, uh, but I think it'd be easier to communicate it verbally and we'll f find a time that works for both of us.